guys and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks. This week I want to take a closer look at a guitar that I guess I've owned for about seven years now in which time it's become an increasingly frequent contributor to studio sessions, to album sessions. It's all over the Buckingham Hammonds album that you'll be hearing later this year. It's been on tours with me all across Europe, all across the UK, even over the US. It's been on Instagram videos, it's been on Facebook videos and more importantly it's been on YouTube videos which for me at least is where some of the intrigue around this guitar kind of starts. Um, after about six years ago, I uploaded a video to YouTube which was a cover of the Rolling Stones Miss You. Um, now, just to set the record straight on this, uh, the guitar you were hearing is not the guitar you were seeing, unfortunately, due to the magic of uh, video. Um, the guitar you were hearing is a Stratocaster. Um, it's my homemade uh, natural kind of wood colour Stratocaster that you may have seen on videos in the past. I'll upload a video about that guitar in a couple of weeks. Um, the guitar you were seeing is, in fact, the Telecaster that today's video is about. Um, the dichotomy there is due literally just the fact that I snapped the string um, on the strap when it came to actually filming the video and the only other guitar I had with me at the time was the Telecaster. So we picked it up and we went with it. Me and Chris Watkins, the mate I shot that video with. Again, I had no actually uh, kind of aspirations, I guess, of shooting a video. I recorded the audio earlier on, about a fortnight or so before. Sent Chris the track, Chris loved it and suggested we make a video out of it. Um, and then, you know, two weeks later, we actually sat down and made the video. Okay, Chris will probably attest to that being the most arduous, torturous 12 hour or so of his life, um, waiting for me to try and relearn stuff that I'd improvised um, a fortnight earlier. Uh, it was a long day, I can tell you that much. But we got there in the end, um, albeit with the Telecaster in the video. Then made a similar mistake, I guess, um, in using the Telecaster on a video I did of Bonnie Wright's I Can't Make You Love Me. Um, in my defence, at this point of the time of uploading that video, Miss You maybe had a thousand, two thousand views and none of the kind of uh, comment war in regard to what guitar it was. Um, at times, which got a little bit heated between people, so I had to kind of step in and just try and straighten the, straighten the record out. Um, Miss You didn't have many views, otherwise I wouldn't have made the same mistake on I Can't Make You Love Me. Again, people are getting confused over what guitar they're actually hearing or what they're seeing. Um, so, you may well be familiar with how this guitar looks, but not necessarily how it sounds. So for that reason, I thought I would try and do a little bit more detailed video in regards to what it is, where I got it, how I got it, etc, etc, etc. Just a little bit more info about it. But, before we delve into that, I wanted to give you a motorbike, um, or a massive lawnmower goes past, um, a bit of a brief history on the Telecaster. First came into uh, the public domain in 1950, albeit called the Esquire. Now the main kind of downfall, I guess, of the Esquire is that Fender issued it without a truss rod, um, which for anyone who's ever tried to adjust the neck relief on a neck or a guitar or adjust its setup will know that a truss rod is a pretty massive part of that. Um, so a guitar without a truss rod, it becomes pretty much unusable after a certain point. Um, 1951, they brought it out with two pickups, so it's starting to look a little bit more like the Telecaster that we know and love by this point, albeit, or with a trash rod as well, albeit called the Broadcaster. This did uh, cause a little bit of an issue in that Gretsch had a drum kit available at the time which was called the Broadcaster, albeit with a K. Um, Leo Fender backed down um, and they removed the name Broadcaster, which led to a small amount of uh, Telecasters going out, which are now known as the Nocasters, purely due to the fact that they have no um, brand name, or not brand name, uh, model name on them, and just a Fender logo. So if you get a hold of one of those, you're probably not a winner. 1952. The Telecaster is unveiled as the guitar that we know and love. Uh, so named by Don Randall, a Fender employee, who converged the two words uh, caster for obvious reason, and telly from a newfangled invention that was called television, which had just appeared. Um, as I said, however many years we are later, we have the Telecaster that everyone knows and loves. Um, but initially, it's worth pointing out that when it was released, it was actually kind of really cool as being a little bit, a bit too ergonomic, I guess, a bit basic, and was actually dubbed a paddle at the time. Um, and people asking Leo Fender if he was planning on going canoeing with it. Um, it was only when James Burton, a renowned country player at the time, got hold of it, started using it um, incredibly prominently, that their kind of orders went through the roof, and here we are, however many years later, with the Telecaster that we know and love. This particular guitar is not, in fact, a Fender. Uh, just to add to confusion to the entire issue, it is an MJT, um, which is a company making relics out in Missouri. Um, it was a present, a joint present of my now wife and my parents, uh, now parents, then parents, um, for my 21st birthday, going back about seven years ago, because um, I'd always wanted a Telecaster. I'd grown up absolutely worshipping people like Keith Richards, Bruce Springsteen, that kind of, you know, typical 52 bat scotch black guard telly. So it had always been something that I wanted. As for the Relic, I know, you know, Relic guitars kind of divide people. Um, it wasn't as worn as this when I got it. I put a fair few miles on it myself. But in regard to actually choosing a Relic, I just thought, 
it would be something different. I didn't own another Relic at that point. Um, I just wanted something which was kind of beaten up straight off the bat, I guess, so I didn't have to be particularly worried about it. Um, it arrived in the US in bits, bolted it together myself, and then had it set up by a good friend who did a fantastic job, and seven years later, it's still working on the same setup that it had then. It plays beautifully, it sounds gorgeous. It's a set of bare knuckle pickups in it, um, although I fail to remember which model specifically. Um, and it's just a very sound guitar, I guess. It's very well built. It's structurally just, you know, as tough as nails. Um, and as I said, it's one of those guitars that you have zero reservation about chucking in a case. Maybe it's going in the hold of a plane, whether it's going in the back of the bus, wherever. It'll just come out of the case in exactly the same state that it went in and will sound great night after night. It's just a great guitar. Um, that has had a hell of a lot of use in the time that I've had it. So without further ado, let's get on and actually show you how it sounds. But as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe. And I shall see you next week, as with every week, for another episode of Friday Fretworks. Cheers, guys. <laughs>
Thank you.